unsolved mystery about Saw 2, so stick around if you want to hear about it. Welcome to Things You Missed. Saw 4 represents a transition for the Saw franchise. After the departure of the original writer, this would be the last Saw movie that director Darren Lynn Bousman would direct for the next 13 years. But the producers obviously wanted to keep the series going, and as a result, Saw started to become more episodic. The movie would contain setups that might not pay off for another two or three movies, and some of them are pretty well-kept secrets. I'm going to uncover and talk about even more Things You Missed, so let's put those words on your screen right now. The film opens with John Kramer's mm -hmm. autopsy. If only this guy knew how valuable that mask would become in 2020. And the scene sets up for the big twist of this movie. The fact that the autopsy is actually the last scene chronologically, and Saw 4 takes place at the same time as Saw 3. The tape in John's stomach is played for Detective Hoffman, and you can fully expect a YouTube video from me in about 70 years with a similar message. You think it's over just because I'm dead? I promise that my work will continue. Despite the twist being a surprise to most, we are constantly shown that time is an important factor in Saw 4. From the ancient clock that John emphasizes to Jill, to the watch he angrily throws away after losing their unborn son, to the countdown that looms over this movie's main game, to the theme of this game being about time and patience. Time is on your side, but your obsession wouldn't let you wait. To the many lessons that John teaches his victims also being about time. Give me time to explain, please. I can't give you time. But outside of the concept of time, there are also a lot of clues that the events of Saw 3 had not yet taken place. Like the fact that outside of that opening flash board scene, there's no mention of John and Amanda's death. And the most recent headlines we see are all about the events of Saw 2. Like this one that says, Detective and Serial Killer Still Missing. A reference to Matthews and John literally tipping out so that John can take the detective to the nerve gas house. Also, the photos on the left side are all photos of John's workshop at Wilson's Steel Plant. If this was taking place after John Kramer's autopsy, they would also have photos from the operation room. This magazine cover has an article about Detective Matthews in relation to Jigsaw, but nothing about Dr. Denlin, who, by the way, is mentioned offhand in the movie, but we don't know that it's her at the time. Well, looks like another doctor went missing from the hospital. I think maybe it's a uh, fiction. When I heard this line, I thought he was saying another doctor is in another doctor in addition to Dr. Denlin, but it was really another doctor in addition to Dr. Gordon. Shortly after, Hoffman is seen holding a children's toy. When asked about it by Agent Perez, he simply says, It's a short story, believe me. Which is not a lie, but if we look closely at it, it's actually one of the toys that belongs to Corbett Denlin, the kidnapped daughter from Saw 3. And the Saw 3 connections really don't let up, because Saw 4 straight up shows us Hoffman placing a note for Amanda in the middle drawer of John's desk, which is a connection to this line from the previous movie. It seems that Darren Lynn Bousman, who I apparently can't talk about at all without saying his full first, middle, and last name, was so confident that we wouldn't notice these details that he straight up put the date that this all takes place on, April 28th, 2006. While we don't see the exact date in Saw 3, we know that it can't be that long after Saw 2, where John Kramer was damn near on his deathbed last time we saw him. We also know Saw 4 takes place six months after Saw 2. Eric's been missing for six months. Carrie was gone for four days. So the timeline checks out. It makes sense that three and four are taking place on the same day. Also, the date helps timeline obsessed people such as myself confirm when Saw 2 actually takes place because Saw 4 is stated to be six months after the disappearance of Eric Matthews. Previously, we could only estimate that Saw 2 took place in October 2005 based on the decomposition of Adam and Zepp's bodies in the bathroom. It looks like they've been rotting for about a year. But now we have something more concrete, and it fits right in with this newspaper headline stating that the police have released the identity of Jigsaw, and it's published on November 30th. It makes sense that they would keep it under wraps after first discovering that John Kramer was Jigsaw, but after losing him and being unable to find him for the next month, they would release his identity to the public. Also, the writer of this article is Jane Kim, the assistant of Darren Lynn Bousman on this movie. There's another article written later on by Jason Lund, the lead man of the art department. Of course, the big clue where I think most of us started to realize that Saw 4 took place alongside the third installment was at the end, when Agent Strom shows up at the Gideon Meatpacking Plant and finds the photo of Jeff's family seen in a previous film. Then there's more of Jeff abusing the lights for some reason. He really does not like lights, does he? So there's a lot of evidence to look back on that proves Saw 4's timeline placement. And while Saw 4 isn't among my favorite Saw movies, I think there's something that I like about giving an iconic entry in a franchise multiple direct sequels. It reminds me of The Legend of Zelda franchise, where they came out with this legendary game, Ocarina of Time, and gave one sequel in the timeline branch where Link is a child, and one sequel in the timeline branch he abandoned as an adult. But the interesting thing about Saw 4 is it not only moves us forward in the timeline, but also flashes us back to John Kramer's past, where we can discover even more 
more things you missed. When Officer Rigg is watching back the Jill Tuck interrogation tapes, he does so on reference monitor B at the police station. We can also see there's another monitor on this cart, but the label says 9-inch HD monitor. Sometimes in the movie industry you can get away with using equipment as props, and this is probably one of those cases. In fact, it happens a lot in soft form, like later on at Rigg's house, and maybe here at the ice block trap, although it's possible that these light panels were never supposed to be on screen. When you make seven movies in seven years, that's the kind of mistake that can happen. When we first see the newspaper article about John buying Gideon meatpacking plant, there's actually some nice lore, as is opposed to the first saw where the contents of the articles were just random stories. Apparently the building had sat abandoned for a hundred years before John purchased it as part of his urban renewal group project, which could explain why nobody ever discovered what he was doing there and why the majority of people don't even really know where it was. Where is it? Where is it? The main game that we follow during Saw 4 is the trial of Daniel Rigg, which contained a lot of parallels to the original Saw. For example, Rigg's game begins when he wakes up in the bathtub, just like Adam Stanhyde when he began his Jigsaw journey. There would be another Adam parallel later, when Rigg comes upon a room filled with photos of the crime that took place at a slimy motel. There's a red light illumination is very reminiscent of the dark room in Adam's apartment, which is similarly lined with incriminating candid photos. On a side note, Jigsaw's punishment for Ivan is to strap him down to this bed? I mean, does he not realize that there are people who pay good money for that kind of experience. There are a few more callbacks to the original, like the question mark seen throughout Rigg's adventure, which referenced the question mark painted on Donnie Reco's stomach for the reverse bear trap. I've mentioned throughout this series that the franchise has many instances of a character playing dead in order to make a surprise attack, and that comes back again in this one, as Detective Matthews feigns death to get close to his supposed captor, Art Blank. Then, at the Chinese New Year celebration, which is of course the year of the pig, we see the origin of the pig mask worn by John's followers in all four zombies. He starts off by using a more cartoon pig mask, but in the background there are more realistic ones, like the ones that he would eventually come to use. And what I found very interesting was another mask with spiral patterns on the cheeks, like that of Billy the Puppet. This must just be a coincidence though, because he already had created Billy as a toy for his unborn child prior to these events. Unless he had maybe seen this mask elsewhere before and maybe was inspired by it. Another likely coincidental connection found in the Chinese New Year Parade scene is these little figurines, which can be seen inside John's deathbed in Saw 3. But back to Rig, he comes out of his bathroom to find his house has been turned into a trap, and his phone has been taken. I wonder if Jigsaw reused the audio of the voice note ring from Saw 2. You've reached Daniel's phone. He's not in right now. I should start selling these voice mail greetings on Fiverr or something. He comes up to his first test subject, Brenda, who is trapped in the scalp chair. Then he discovers the three-digit combination to release her. <laughs> the number's a little nod to the area code in Toronto, where the movies 2 through 9 were filmed. It's kind of frustrating that Jigsaw could have been like the ultimate crime-fighting machine, but instead became the ultimate crime-committing machine. I mean, he could have easily just taken these photos to the police. Same thing with the videotape of Ivan. But no, he's got to go and put them in literal torture devices. So Rig follows the path that Jigsaw had set out for him, while Strom also goes down the trail of Jigsaw's clues, but also stops to interrogate Jill Tuck, at the beginning of which he looks like he's posing for a CZ's World Instagram photo. <laughs> tells him more stories about John's past, including some that took place at her drug clinic, where we see younger versions of some of the criminals from Jigsaw's trap. <laughs> Gus Colliar, the guy who was taken out by the Magnum High Hole trap at that point, you had nothing. Addison Corday, the woman who fell victim to nothing the razor box trap, tries to get John to solicit prostitution from her as he's waiting outside, and Troy, the man who met his demise in the classroom trap in Saw 3, 